Hey, who <laughs> can't hide it? God. I see yes. that. What's up, bro? You good? Why yeah. you let us bring your our cameras if you got seven of them following you? Nah, we work together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sure. I'm a big fan of y'all show. I really like, I genuinely watch y'all show. Sure. I was watching love. Kevin Hart interview the other day. That's why I just can't be in the, the combat sport world, period. Yeah. I feel like everybody's ultra aggressive. Nah, they be fake aggressive. They don't really, they just be talking. You you would think it would be like, yeah. Yeah. like nobody do nothing to nobody. You never hear, you never hear nothing, nothing happen. You a million dollar thing, you know what I'm saying? So like now you're you gonna think about Everybody it. can fight, so okay. it's like, you don't wanna have to just be, keep fighting that can fight every time. We both can fight, so it's right. like, Nobody really be doing nothing. They just be talking. And that's the other other piece too. They don't have anything to prove because they get a chance to do it. Yeah. You know, y'all get to step into the ring and settle all it's scores. Like on great white height. When they started fighting at the end, and Samuel Jackson was like, "Don't give them something we can make them pay for." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit. Somebody will pay millions to watch this fight. Why y'all get this shit to it for free? Yeah. When Dale fight, nobody need to buy no tickets. It's gonna be twenty mother effers there that just know him. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. No, for real. So make sure we we tight. We good? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got it. I always hey, watch the room, bro. Hey, make sure I don't we know, good. I don't know. It's something about you because you, you you know something. <laughs> you know something. Hey, yeah, I can find that person every hey, time. I, I know that face. It's something about you. I don't know where you from, but you, yeah, you're yeah. really good at scoping it out. Get you right. <laughs> Come on, we can sit down. Don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> and then just start looking around at people. Oh, quiet. hey, because when you that guy, you can't put yourself in that situation. Yeah, yeah, right. You know oh, what I'm saying? Listen, you gotta sit back. That's that's T. My buddy's name's T. Mm -hmm. That's who does that for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I that's T. <laughs> 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 he fight too though. He fight too. Yeah, they too, don't really yeah, hang yeah. around folks that can't fight though. I can't fight like you. But I can fight. I can whoop some a normal person's ass. I can't yeah, whoop no sure. boxer's ass. So what like, you he a professional? Like he. he he ain't no, his name is Mario Jones. He ain't no seven knockouts. So he, you know, he the truth too. He the next one up, so. What about a middle school legend that was whooping ass nine years old? <laughs> oh yeah, old? that's cool too. That's cool too. <laughs> cool too. Hey, not when he hey. 40. <laughs> Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way up in the got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stomach cap, pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way up in the got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, Welcome to the show. Freddie T, Chan, I'm RC. Here with a lightweight champ, Devin Haney. 29 and 0, a flawless record, and you've done it in a way that's shown nothing but being a professional technician, a high level of skill, and you've actually made fighters who people consider high level fighters look like B and C level fighters. You know, you can look as recently as your last two wins yeah. over Cambosis. Uh, to Happy Dad, we appreciate your partnership. DraftKings, thank you for being a sponsor of the show. For all the people that watch and subscribe, uh, we're extremely grateful. I want to get kind of to it, man, because this show is about learning about the person. We've watched you fight. We'll talk about that as well. But, you know, being a Bay Area kid, but also kind of like Chan was talking about a middle school legend, like you were throwing hands young yeah. and, and you were getting into fights. And then your father said, OK, we're going to if you're going to throw hands outside of the ring, I'm going to bring you into the gym. What did that moment or how did that moment change your life? At that moment, I didn't know that it was changing my life. I just felt like, all right, like my dad, you say, he said he wanted to take me to the gym because I was fighting in school. I'm like, all right, like, I don't care. I'm, I'm not tripping. So I always just like naturally knew how to fight. Well, I, at that time, I felt like I knew how to fight. So um, now that, you know, years and years later, of hard work, dedication and sticking with it, it who knows where I would be if, if, if it wasn't for that. You know, I definitely feel like I would have went down the wrong road. Um, just because I was just getting into so much trouble at a young age. What do you feel some of those anger issues were or why do you think you had them at that time? I don't know. I mean, I just feel like I, I didn't really know how to like, you know, like where to put my energy, like, you know, where to put like, you know, my love to fight my, you know, my aggression, where, where, where to, you know, put it. And my dad, you know, he chose the, 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 the right sport, the right thing for me to, you know, get all that out. Y'all moved to Vegas because of your career, right? Nah, we moved to Vegas because just we come from Oakland, California, mm -hmm. where it was just a lot of violence, a lot of, 
you know, shootings, a lot of stuff. So it was like we came to Vegas for like a better life. Yeah. As a young athlete, that that like when we play football, you ain't no nine year old that you gonna make it. Yeah, you know what I'm yes. saying. As boxing, you were ranked as a kid. Yeah, but at at, at that time, you know, we just like it. We still didn't know like you know how far I could take it, or we wasn't really that dialed in with boxing. It was just really just to leave open just for a better life. That was the main thing. Like we was. We, we would have boxed forever. Like, we really wasn't that as serious as we got when we were in Vegas. And that just comes from it being the boxing capital of the world and being so many gyms and, like, people are serious about boxing in, in Vegas. And in the Bay Area, it's not really that many boxers. Not, now it's starting to be more and more. But at that time, we only had Andre Ward, and mm -hmm. that, that we never really had no big boxers come out of Oakland. So it was hard to really, like, look at somebody big from the town. You've been fighting since you were seven. And like RC said, you're 29 and 0. And boxing sort of taking this entertainment approach. You got football players getting in the ring boxing. You got YouTubers boxing. And, and, and you have someone like yourself, passionate, dedicated, been doing it your entire life, yet you have to fight under a Logan Paul, a YouTuber's yeah. undercard. Does that sit well with you? No, nah, I mean, at that, at that time when I did do that, when I did fight on the undercard of Logan Paul, it was like, it was a good opportunity because they just had so many viewers. Like, I think it was the first YouTube boxing match. So it was just a different audience, different crowd. I think that, you know, the football players, the athletes, the, the, the influencers coming to boxing is good for boxing. Like, you know, it's making boxing even bigger. Boxing is evolving because of that. You speak of boxing evolving, you had a, a different route. We hear all the time about the boxers who get opportunities to go to the Olympics and they fight amateur uh, Lomachenko, who you'll be fighting. He fought amateurs for a while. He has two medals in the Olympics. But for you, you chose to turn professional extremely young. I think they moved the Olympic age up. Yeah. And you were fighting in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. I think, what was it, El, El Perro Salado. Yeah. What was that experience like for you being so young fighting professionally? It was crazy, you know, to be fighting in Mexico. Um, and I was really one of the, like, like the first ones to really like make it kind of cool to go to, to go to Mexico. At that time, the Olympics was the big thing. It was to go to Olympics, go, you know, try to get a medal, try to go sign with a big promoter, you know, for a good signing bonus and, and go that route. But, you know, me and my dad set out to do something different. We just, we, we switched it up totally. And that is because they changed the age of the Olympics. So it was like, man, we might as well just go pro. And cause I was sparring a bunch of pros, like world champions at that time. So um, that, that, that's what we did. And it was, it was crazy as being such a young kid as a professional, but it worked out. You know, you do a lot of stuff young. Is it true you knocked a kickboxer out of his Velcro shoes? Yeah, when I was like, <laughs> no, nah, when I was like, it was my first sparring match, like, as a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I really was just street fighting. And it was like a little kid, he had like some Velcro shoes on, I knocked him out of his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because you're talking about you going pro and, you know, just deciding that early. What's the pros and cons of that? For that young boxer out there right now thinking about making that decision of when to turn pro and mm -hmm. do I do amateur? Like, what, what, yeah. what's the pros and cons? So, about? like, what that was, I could have went to the Olympics and I felt like I would have did good in the Olympics. I could have got a gold medal, could have got a silver medal, could have got a bronze. But, you know, that sets you up for the pros. You can go sign with a big promoter and, and, and start making money at a young age. I didn't start making money until uh, my 19th professional fight. So I was fighting for nothing. I was fighting for free. And, um, but I saw the bigger picture. I knew that, like, it was going to pay off uh, eventually. You like to keep all your money with you on your neck? Oh, no. <laughs> hey, if, I, if I kept all my money on my neck, boy, what? <laughs> hey, my neck would be so heavy. <laughs> hey, so we, we're talking about you being so young, doing all these amazing things. Uh, it was also brought to our attention that you were the youngest promoter, too. Yeah. What nurtured that mindset? Yeah, I mean, just seeing somebody like Floyd, who, you know, was, was, started his own promotional company and uh you know me and my pops we was like man we might as well do it ourselves that way we can control our own destiny it's never like a reason why a fight couldn't happen or you know this side now in boxing they got this thing called on this side of the street if you work with one promoter or one network you can't go mess with another promoter or whatever the case may be where you just cut yourself short but i trusted in in, in myself i felt like i was a good enough fighter and i would be big enough that eventually I would be able to, to con control my career. And you bring up your father, and he's, y'all, this y'all. He's your, what, what is your father? What's all his titles in your life? Oh, man, my pops is, is, is everything. You know, he's he my best friend. He my, he my father. He my, 
man, he's a, he's everything, man. He play he plays all the roles, whatever role he 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 needs to play. So uh, I'm I'm thankful for that. I've seen that movie already. I've seen what um, Roy Jones Jr. with yeah. his dad and had to break off to win the title. Yeah. Shane Mosley, mm -hmm. him and his dad would you know they were together and I think yeah. they broke up and then yeah. how how do you and your father work together? as a son-father combination, also as business partners, but it's your career, you out there taking them punches. At the end of the day, you know, um, you gotta know that balance, you know, when to, how to, when to be a dad and mm -hmm. when to, you know what I'm saying, business is business at the end of the day. So we don't ever put the personal with the with the business. We know we know how to separate the two. And I just come from experience. I'm not gonna say that we just had to, everything's been butterflies and rainbows. You know, yeah. of course we, we bump heads, but we bump heads as, as partners and we lead a, father-son relationship out of it and we get over it. I just got, I remember, cause we talking about your chains. I remember my mom had my financial advisor's information at one point when I first got in the league. And she came up to me one month and she said, Channing, you spent a hundred thousand dollars partying last month. Sheesh. And I said, I earned it. And I walked into my room. <laughs> and that was kind of like, I'm saying that cause that was the moment where just financially I had, that was just, I earned it. That was me telling her like, it's my money. I'm a grown man. I'm gonna do what I want with it. How much you spent in the strip club? Ninety nine thousand. <laughs> the rest was clothes. <laughs> Cause I don't really wear no nice clothes, but I'm gonna throw some money. <laughs> but the out of the ring stuff, which with your pops, the chains. Like your dad ever look and be like, hey D, you need a no, ninth I'm, chain, a twelfth I mean, chain. His money, his money, my money, my money. So yeah. you know, I can't tell him what to do with his money. He can't tell me what to do with mine. You know, we separate the two. Yeah. You know, he get his, I get mine. What I do with mine is what I do with mine. With that, though, and speaking about the relationship and, you know, we've got an opportunity to kind of laugh at some of the dynamics. He, for a period of time, couldn't get a visa yeah. for the first Cambosis fight. And it was one of those times where you guys were working. He said during that period of time, of all of the things he's accomplished, raising you is the one he's most proud of. Mm -hmm. When you hear that, what does that make you feel? It's a blessing, and at one point when I was a kid, I used to like just want to make my dad happy. The reasons he couldn't get the visa, he learned from those things and wanted to instill a different form of success, a different form of lifestyle for you, and he did that. And for that to be his proudest accomplishment, not necessarily the, the fighter you are, yeah. but the man you are, when you think of him loving you in that manner, what do you feel? Man, like I said, when I was a kid, man, I just wanted to make my dad happy. Like, I used, to, I used to just, like, try to train hard just to make my dad happy. I used to try to spar good just to make my dad happy. Everything was just to, like, to see a smile on my dad's face. So just to, you know, come this far and to for my dad to be, like, genuinely happy with, you know, the creation that he made, the, what, 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 he's, what he's, you know, made in me and the, the man that I've become is, is a blessing. I'm happy. I'm happy and proud of that. That's awesome. Dev, so this is, this is my boxing question. I love the sport. I love, like people say, the sweet science of boxing. Because of mixed martial arts and UFC, that's a little bit more barbaric, where you see guys get knocked out. Fighters like yourself have started to be criticized for being a tactician, for understanding how to hit and not get hit. How does that affect your approach to fighting? I mean, that's the art of boxing at, at the end of the day. That's the sweet science to hit and not get hit. I mean, it's it's easy to go, you hit me, I hit you, I take one to, to give you one. Anybody can do that. Anybody that, I mean, that doesn't even know how to fight could do that. But to be able to hit you as many times as I want and you not be able to hit me, that's an art. That's like, you know what I'm saying? That's like a Picasso to, to be able to do that. And the, at the end of the day, I got a family. I got I want to, you know, have all my senses, everything to be good when I'm when it's time to go out. So um I'm gonna continue to do what I'm gonna do, rather rather they like it or not, as long as I win and uh, keep beating these guys easily, I will. Talk to me a little bit about late in the fight against Linares, though. Mm -hmm. When you're winning handedly, he he hits you, and it's a, a different thing when you get hit. It's mm -hmm okay, he, he took a hit, or this guy yeah. caught up to him. Will they continue to catch up to him? What's going through your mind when you're walking to your corner in between that round? That was my first time ever being hurt, ever being wobbled, anything in, in my life. So, you know, you, you can't believe it. It's like a moment of shock. But once I sat down, I, I gathered my senses, everything. I said, okay, I'm going to tie up. I'm going to tie him up because that's what you're supposed to do. 
why would I go out and go mano to mano? You back to you hit me, I hit you. Let's let's see who can knock each other out. Because and I'm and I'm hurt. What sense do that make? No, I'm going to tie you up until I get back right. And when 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 I'm back right, then we can go back to fighting. And it that's just experience. At the end of the day, no great fighter has make, went uh, had a great career and not been hurt. It sounds strategic, and it is. It's strategic. The yeah. sweet art, y'all are talking about it. But there's people that say you don't have knockout power, though. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those people? Yeah, I mean, the people that say I don't have knockout powers are people that don't be in the ring with me. The ones that get in the ring with me, they never say that. We can go watch, go, <laughs> no, no, listen, no, listen. Go watch every fight, go watch what they say after the fight. They never say that. Yeah. And if I don't got knockout power, come show me then. Come, come, you know, come walk through all these punches that I'm going to give you. <laughs> and then we'll see. Every fight that these guys is face beat up, eyes swollen, bloody, all that. So, man, as long as I'm winning, I got this far without knockout power, shit, let's keep going with it. <laughs> <laughs> Ride this train. Hey, D, I want to quote something you said in 2020. Um, I'll tell you this, I will never lose to a white boy in my life. I don't care what nobody got to say. Fight a white boy 10 times, I'm going to beat him 10 times. But I'm going to say this, none of us in here believe you're racist. Yeah. That's just off top. No, not at all. We grow up under certain circumstances mm -hmm. where we see things, we hear things, and that becomes a part of us. Yeah. Could you elaborate on those comments just for anybody that's listening or watching this? Yeah, I mean, I could see how some people could interpret it the, the, the wrong way. So, I mean, it's nothing to really, for me to really explain it because I already, I already, you know, apologized to the world about it. So it's not for me to keep trying to, you know, dig into and keep explaining, explaining. At the end of the day, it wasn't the right thing to say, which the, they interpreted it wrong, but um, it is what it is, you know. I think that's one of those lessons that the things we say amongst ourselves yeah. that are culturally understood, right. we can't say publicly because publicly yeah. those things will be critiqued and, and torn down in a different and to way. And to tell the truth, it wasn't the right thing to say, you know, just openly to, just to say it um, because race don't, don't doesn't define how good you are or, you know, it's as it's, it's many great white fighters, as many great Mexicans, Hispanics, how, how, black, whatever um, around the world. And so it wasn't the right thing to say, but um, the way it, it didn't come out the right way. And I, I, I'm far from racist. I don't, you know, I don't have a racist bone in my body. My stepmom is white. So mm. she, her, she raised me. So, mm. you know, um, but it is what it is. In that apology to everyone, you said you're chasing greatness. That process is, is, is never easy. Mm -hmm. And you, you've done so much, you're 29 and 0. How do you continue to stay focused, you know, so you can get to that point where, you know, you can, you can join the elites, you know, the Floyds, the undefeateds, yeah. those greats, the Mikes, the Ali's. What's the process? What is it going to take for you to get there? When I set out to do this, I didn't want to be just a mediocre fighter or, you know, I didn't, anything that I was going to do, I was going to be the best at it. You know, I want my name to be remembered forever with the greats. I want my name to live on much longer than I ever will. So, uh, you know, I'm doing the proper things that, that, that I've seen the greats do. You know, the, the work ethic, the discipline, the things that I've seen them do, I'm doing. You know, you talk about being mentioned with the greats. You wanted the Lomachenko fight three, four years ago mm -hmm. when he was at the top of the pound for pound rankings. And to now be at a point where He's almost chasing you. Yeah. He was the hunted at that time. Now you're becoming the bigger name in boxing, the bigger name at the weight class. When you look at what he'll be fighting for and trying to gain back, what are some of the pitfalls to fighting a fighter as experienced as he is? Every fight, you know, we gain experience. And most of the guys that I've been fighting, you know, they have, they, they have at the top level have had more experience than me because I'm the, the, yep. the youngest guy. So each fight, I take experience from this one, this one, this one. So, you know, experience matters, but, you know, at the end of the day, I just feel like I'm the, the better fighter overall, faster, stronger, bigger, uh, more more athletic. And, uh, you know, I got, got youth on my side. So when I'm victorious, I will take his experience and, you know, add it on to, to, to my belt. So when you look at boxing, especially at your weight class, you have Tank that's in the weight class, you have Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, uh, yourself, uh, Lomachenko, there are so many names. What is it that makes you feel, of all those names, you can not only be the biggest star, but the best fighter? Uh, I just think that these guys, they, one, they don't train as hard as me. When they, they, they don't have the work ethic like me. They don't have the discipline like me. 
they don't have the 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 skills, the the ring IQ. I'm really a student of the game. Like since a young kid, like I can tell you boxing in and out, like the greats, like way, 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 way before my time. So um, I just feel like I'm just naturally God made me different. Like I'm really one of the chosen few, and um, I was born to do this. How much film do you watch? When I was young, I used to watch a lot of film. Like I can tell you, like about greats and slavery days <laughs> but 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 yeah yeah, yeah no like no that. literally now to be honest i don't watch as much boxing as i used to i, I tend to watch myself more than anything why or just no, to critique why don't myself. you like watching other people i don't know i feel i don't know i just don't really like the fighters today don't really like entertain me they don't really excite me i don't really get like that's funny because my next question is going to be do you think you get the respect you deserve yeah no i definitely don't think that i get the respect i deserve um, especially with me, with me being so young, the youngest undisputed champion of all time, the guy that's not ducking or dodging nobody. I've been wanting to fight whoever, whenever, however. Um, I just, I don't feel like they give me my just due, but this happened to all the greats. They didn't get their just due, and you know, eventually they, they did over time, and I think I will over time, so I'm not sweating it. I'm just gonna keep beating whoever they put in front of me. Yeah, and the politics of boxing mm -hmm. is something that everybody has to understand when you're in the game. Yeah. What's the most frustrating part about but, the politics? See, with the politics of boxing, it never really affected me because, like like I was telling y'all earlier, um, when it was politics, I went to another network. I went to another promoter to make the fight happen. So what, what that tells you what type of fighter I am. I'm willing to go with this promoter, that promoter, this network, that network, just to make a fight happen. Go to Australia twice, mm -hmm. take less money, do, do the proper things that it takes to show the type of fighter I am to show that how great I am. You said before that, uh, especially going into the second fight against Cambosis, which you had zero to prove, mm -hmm. but you knew you'd beat him the first time. Mm -hmm. And because of the clause in the contract, you'd have to go over there and fight him again. And you said you did that to make the fight happen. In boxing, a large critique of it or a negative has been the best fighters don't fight one another. Yeah. You know, we're still waiting for Errol and Bud. Obviously, we have um, Garcia and Tank. They, they, they settled that score. Now you and Lomachenko. What do you think boxing can do better to make sure that fighters of your caliber get the type of matchups that make y'all stars? Because, you know, you're a historian of the game. Mm -hmm. The reason boxing was big is because we saw Hearns and Hagler. Yeah. We saw Hagler and Leonard. You saw Leonard and Roberto Duran. What do you think boxing needs to I mean, change to make sure that happens? Fighters gotta want it at the end of the day. We, we, we the bosses, we just, we just don't know it or we don't, you know, we don't, you know, even push for it. But we got to say, if, if a fighter really wants to make the fight happen, then they'll press to make it happen. But fighters will just use the excuse of their promoter or the network or something like that. And sometimes it's true, I'm not saying that it's always the case, but for the most part, we, we need to try to control our own destiny, try to control our own careers. You know what I'm saying? We're not under an organization like the NFL or like NBA or nothing like that. Like we have the say, we just don't, you know, express it but, enough. But isn't your thought process with, with being respected by a bunch of 40 year olds, isn't that old school? What? That fight anybody anywhere, anytime? Like people are strat strategizing their careers mm. and you seem like you old school, walk yeah. him out here, I'm gonna knock his ass yeah, out. Yeah, no, for sure. Now that's definitely, um, I, I'm definitely a throwback fighter when it comes to that. Not many fighters do that, not, but not many fighters want, want to fight, you know, each other. They want to try to get most money for the least tests or the, you know, the easiest fights possible. But, and, okay. not, and not all fighters. I'm not here to bash fighters or nothing like that because there's some fighters out there that's, that when I want to fight the best and want to test themselves and, and are fighting the, 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 the best. Look at Canelo. He's going up and down, up and down weight classes. and Guys like that are doing it, but it's just some fighters who, who don't. Is it smart to not play to not play the the dance around strategically find fights? I mean, it depends how you look at it. Cause we could change the whole dynamic of boxing and make it like the UFC. Those guys fight each other, lose, fight, fight again. <laughs> still equally as big, may even be bigger after a loss. Look at uh, Israel Adesanya. He uh, he lost and then came back, won, and now he even bigger than he was before. Yeah. But just because he lost and then he came back and proved himself. So we could change the whole dynamic of it, but we're not, you know, Floyd kind of like, of course, Floyd made the boxing bigger and everything, but he kind of messed up the game with the undefeated record and undefeated is everything. So guys don't want to fight each other. They want to keep the O. 
We spoke about guys just talking the talk, and we said it was cap. A mm. lot of fight this, fight that. Yeah. But when you hear comments coming from Shakur Stevenson and then uh, Garcia saying they want to fight you, Channing said you might feel somewhat disrespected. Like, you don't feel that respect that you've earned. But when you hear those comments, what does that make you feel like? I think that that's given me the respect that I mm. that I yeah, earned I because so I remember it was a time when guys wouldn't even call my name. Like, they was like, they wouldn't even act like I even existed. So it's like a compliment that they mentioned my name, that they say my name, because it's like, yeah, I'm I'm the guy. I'm the guy with, with everything. I'm the guy with the belts. So you better mention my name, because if you don't, then I'm going to say you duck it. I'm going to say that, that you're scared to say my name. So now that they say my name, I can't be mad at it. I'm, I'm happy. That's, that, that's good. I embrace it. And I want to make those fights happen. So yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. People were looking at me like, oh, you're not mad? No, nah, I'm not mad at all that Shakur said my name. Good, good for him. He's supposed to say that. Right. That shouldn't be frowned up, up, upon now. Nowadays, you call a fighter out, they get mad. Ain't this the fight game? Ain't we supposed to be fighting each other? Ain't we supposed to be calling each other out? How old are you again? <laughs> hey, but he, he act like he's 48, don't he? <laughs> he was born my rookie year. Just say that, 98. That's crazy. Yeah. No, Fred, if he was born your rookie year, he'd be 40 by now. <laughs> like that, it's your... It, you're lucky we don't curse on this show too much. <laughs> and that's a lie, we do. I'm just glad you don't cuss me. You, you mentioned earlier the dedication you have to the sport, your work ethic, and obviously when we cracked open the happy dad, you mentioned your faith. How much does that help you in continuing to be disciplined? Because it's so much in order to honor what you need to do yeah. as your faith is concerned. It can help you from falling into some of the trappings that come with being a big time boxing star. Yeah, I mean, Islam has definitely changed my life and it just keeps me grounded all around. Like, you know, a lot of looking at everything that every decision that I'm making and um, it keeps me grounded. It keeps me disciplined. Uh, not not only, you know, for boxing, but just for life. So outside of the ring, when it's time to celebrate and everything, I'm still disciplined. I don't know all the rules uh -huh. of, of the nation, but does it, do you have to work around things while training? Yeah, so we have a time of Ramadan where we fast and I'm always, I always have a fight around Ramad around Ramadan. So I, I can get the excuse of, of saying, you know, God, you know, I'm this is my job, it's how my, I feed my family. I can't fast right now. And, um, you know, just basically excuse me or I could make it up after Ramadan. And that's what I do because it's just too hard for me to train. I'm training three times a day. Wow. So I can't, it's hard for me to fast and not drink any water and make all my prayers and everything, which I, I try to make all my prayers. I try to be the best Muslim I can be, but it's hard for me to fast. Yeah. It was just a show on, on what's that basketball player? Magdoud Abdul Raouf. Yeah, yeah. Sure. He got criticized. Really? He wasn't putting his hand over his heart and different things, you know, yeah. for the for the national anthems and all. Yeah. And he got criticized. But now, does anybody care? You hear anything about the, your, your religion? No, I, it's so many Muslims around the world that they just, we 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 embrace each other. like. All the Muslims, they, 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 they embrace me. I embrace, you know, any Muslim that I see. I'm not even familiar with him, but I will em embrace him and, you know, maybe reach out to him. I, I'm, I wasn't familiar with him. But, um, man, so much support from the Muslims around the world. Does fasting include abstaining? So you're not supposed to have sex sun up to sundown unless you're having sex with your wife during Ramadan. You got to be married to have sex. And we had Caleb plan on, and I believe, I don't know if it was Channing, we asked him about his training camp, because it's the freaky dude right here in the whole I situation. I don't know how you, I ain't lasting a night. <laughs> he said Man, if he had to- I'd be on if, FaceTime with my wife at the hotel last night. <laughs> this dude Yo, crazy. It yeah, is what he, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. So, it ain't but so many hards you can get, I ain't gonna waste none of mine. <laughs> so you, every night? Got to. That gets you cleansed back out. When you was playing, you would still almost every night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That night before the game, now you got to go, you know. That's why, that's why he has 17 knee surgeries. Listen, they would put all this we, on me. I don't back, know about all that. He was having back problems. What's that? You see why they said Scottie Pippen, he was having back problems. Because he was stroking. Girl said yeah, four times yeah, that's, yeah. That, that's a lie. You also got to think about this. That's too, a lie. Though, that's a lie, right? That's a lie. Nobody can have sex four times a day. A every single this, day. And a lot of this sex he's talking about is with himself, too. Oh, ninety-two percent. Yeah, listen, man. Yeah, you know, we, like, like Islam, we're not supposed to even watch porn. Man. We can't, we can't watch porn. I don't get that part. Okay, I get so a lot. I get, so I get, I get being faithful. I get a lot of things. I don't get not being able to pleasure yourself. It's yourself. I feed myself. I watch myself. But you're watching watch other yourself. people. What if it's just one person? 
What do you mean? If she just dancing and OnlyFans. That's porn. <laughs> Devin, he is going to find a way around the rules and the beliefs. <laughs> yeah, he going to bend the rules. He going to bend. Yeah, he gonna bend yeah, yeah. And he going he gonna to weave, man. He's going to weave in and out. Well, what was your question? Which was <laughs> Oh, nah. So in training camp, I was like, what's your cutoff? Because uh, Caleb told us he's at eight weeks. He does nothing too much. So yeah, I used to do that. I used to do the eight weeks, the eight week thing. And um, I couldn't do it because I'll start getting like wet dreams when it get closer to my fight. Like one day I had a wet dream the day of the fight. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> wait, I said, no, do it. Wait. Y'all I might be it. brothers because nah, he horny too. That's nah. the best dream. <laughs> no, because Who like, a regular dream? you know, like when, when you got like too much testosterone, when it's like too much built up, mm -hmm. then you, your body's going to find a way to release it. So when you go too long, that's, that's too long. Brahma bull. Some horses are made to work. Some horses are made to breed. We're yeah. breeders. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, man. We got testosterone in us. We yeah. breed. We I, make babies. I, I, you I never want to be in any sexual category <laughs> along with yeah, Channing. Yeah, nah. One day is, like, ridiculous. Like, um, even out of training camp, I can't, like, every day? Nah, that's crazy. Not like a great performance jumping off the nightstand. You got a quickie? Yeah. <laughs> In the I'll bathroom, she doing her I'll hair. I be trying to prove myself when I go. <laughs> See you young. <laughs> See go. you young. See, you can't, no, no, you don't always got to throw, throw your best pitch. I make them crazy. You ever seen a change up in baseball? The yeah. guys throw 99 yeah, yeah, yeah. and throw that little 70. You throw the change up, yeah. Sometimes I, you got to throw a change I'm up throwing. on the plate. 100 miles an hour fastball. So you, fastball. Heat, so you just time. heat every time. I'm proving myself. I got, man, I'm young. I got to, these, these girls going to talk bad about you if you don't. I got to, I got to, we all been I got to, so they can tell the next. <laughs> so you just, so my dog, like, I'm not going to have a BDR out there. There will be no bad penis reports. No, I'm just about. kidding. I don't be, I don't be out here, man. I don't be but, but for, for, but, for you though, in becoming a star, obviously social media yeah. now as well is such a, a huge thing to continue to brand yourself. I mean, you walked in here with 17 people, 14 <laughs> cameras, a boom mic. And having that, how do you deal with making sure the main thing stays the main thing, but also being a young man your age and enjoying life? I just think that, you know, Islam keeps me grounded, keeps my head on a swivel, you know, lets me, makes me not get too far ahead of myself, not too arrogant, too flamboyant, fearing God. And you know, trusting in, in that you know what God can give you, He can take away. Where Allah, like, everything that Allah has give, given me, He can take away at any given time. So I continue to work hard for it, to keep it. You know, because when I knew that one day I, I would be here, I knew everything that I got. I knew that eventually it would come. So um, now it's just about keeping it. And I want to, I want to get more and more and more and more. How do you feel about being in the spotlight with having people not only wanting to know about who you are? as a boxer, but who you are as a man. You continue to mention the Islamic faith yeah. and you mention Allah, you mention all the things that you know God has given you, but you are in a world where if you are dating somebody or yeah. if you get into an altercation, it's your face yeah. that's plastered over. People now begin to praise you. How do you continue, aside from the faith, how do you continue to have humility in that? Or did you always want this level of fame? When I was young, I used to think like it was like cool, like damn, like I, I want to be like famous, I want to be lit, I want people to like wonder, want to know about me and everything. And then when I got it, it was like, oh my god, like you can't, I can't even like go on a date with somebody without like just I could be, it could, it could be our first date or just us getting to know each other, and we might be at Mastros or wherever we might go out to dinner, and the world say we together. So like that's like where it's like. Damn, like, you know, you came and just get to know somebody and go be a regular person. Somebody see you out, they take a picture, send it to a blog, and now all of a sudden you're dating that person. And now you you take on the responsibilities or what they can go be out with somebody the next day and they cheating on you. Or you go be on a date with somebody else and you're cheating on them. So that's the, that's the only thing that, uh, well, that's one of the things that, that, that I'm like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't like. But it comes with it. You know, you, it's, it's hard to say you want the to to be the best fighter in the world. You want to have the money and everything, but you don't want people to know you. You don't want people to look in and microscope on your life. I mean, it, it, it all comes with it. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm in this position, but it does get, it does get annoying. You know, Mastro's is hard. I heard sometimes Dubai can be hard <laughs> too. Like if What's you- Mastro's? Mastro's is a restaurant. restaurant yeah. You've oh, been to Mastro's okay. before. Oh, I have. You've been to Mastro's. Oh, so I like, thought he took like, girls to the Applebee's. No, he don't, he don't go to Applebee's. 
No, I will. I will go to Applebee's. <laughs> yeah, Applebee's. I, I will. I will. I like it. And do you have you have entourage on your date? Ah, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> you, if it's you, is it you and the lady, or is it a whole fleet of people? Nah, I mean, I'll in? go by myself. I'm, you know, but most of the time it'd be just my me and my security. We like, got a little security. That's yeah. some, that's hard. That's hard on a date, though. No, no, he won't be on a he won't be on a date. He he'd be in the car. He come peek in, make sure everything good. Could come, you know, do his wellness checks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now nah, he's not gonna sit next to me. We can both be on a date. <laughs> Looking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you, hey, you, you, you ask the chick, oh, what you want to yeah. drink? And she she ordered her drink. What you want, John? But I, will, <laughs> but I will go, I will go on a date by myself. But just that fame of like that's why I'm asking, cause about yeah. that fame, like not even being able to go on a date by yourself. Yeah, you yeah. No, I will, careful. I will, I will go on a date by myself, but typically, typically not. But like like I said, it's hard to go on dates because Every time you be on a date, somebody say y'all together. So well, you gotta just just stay at the house. Nah, and then you Hulu. can't even bring it. You can't even bring everybody to your house because you don't even know somebody. So you just get to know somebody. You gotta bring them to your house. We talked about your pop, your dad. You know, wearing all these different hats. At what point during your career, as you started to you know rise up to superstardom, at what point did he say, "Look, these these there's a big distraction out there, not just the fame, the money, this and that." But but those women, when did he sit you down and wear that hat? So like when I was a kid, I couldn't have a girlfriend. Like I couldn't have no girls, no nothing. Like my I dad, was, yeah, he was focused like yeah, that, bro. My dad was so strict. Like <laughs> like he was strict. Like he was like, nah, like girls is a distraction. Like I couldn't go to like I couldn't really go to that many places because my pops like he installed it in me like at a young age. Like girls is like distractions. We never had to have that talk when I was grown because it just never was a problem. Girls never was one of my problems. But going in, but even going in a relationship with that thought, doesn't that hinder your ability to have a long-term relationship, a real relationship? I mean, I don't know. I guess maybe. There's some gold diggers out there. I dated plenty back in my day. Yeah. But then I met my wife. You know what I'm saying? It was a difference. But if you if you do, if I went in with my wife like I did, you know, the girl in the red dress Friday night, I would never be married right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, you're going to have to change that when you get older? It's just experience, you know? Uh, it's like with anything, you know, you got to just go through it and experience. You, you could tell me, you could tell me, you could right. tell me, but I got to experience it for myself. That's so right now I'm just going through the experience, That's weaving true. it out. You've spoken about your father um, a ton, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all have children as well, and that relationship to me is one of the most important relationships I have. I do have two girls, but my relationship with my son is extremely different. The, the way that we have conversations, the things that I could tell him about myself and be vulnerable mm -hmm. so he understands. We just share in a very different way. You didn't grow up as much with your mother mm -hmm. because you, you, know, you were raised with your father. Mm -hmm. That experience and not necessarily having a close relationship with her, did that affect you in any way? I always had like a good relationship with my mom. It would I did, I just didn't live with my mom. My okay. mom like was always like in my life. She was but just from a, a a distance. So I can't really say like, you know, my mom was somebody I could call, somebody I could, you know, whenever I needed to talk to or hear hear a woman a woman's point of view cuz it's different when you just hearing a man's point of view every every time every time. Sometimes you need just as a as a young man, kid, whatever, growing up, you need to hear that woman's voice. You need to hear that woman's that woman's love. So my mom has, you know, been been there for me for whenever I needed that. That's important too, because pop seems like no nonsense, yeah. especially <laughs> when you were younger. And I yeah. grew up with my parents being kind of both of my best friends. And I knew when I needed to go talk to my moms and I knew when it was a, a conversation to have with my father. You know, when we, I was young, when I was a kid, I was scared of my dad for so long. Like, bro, I was scared of my dad until I was like 18 years old. My dad really pumped fear in me. So like, <laughs> no, it was like, but it wasn't even like, my dad just like, he could just yell at me. He could just talk to me and it would just like fuck up my whole day because <laughs> it just was like my dad. Like my dad was like, his voice meant everything to me. That's the respect you need though. No, and 100%. Think... And like, even with, even with like with, with today, like my dad, I feel like he too, like my dad, you know, we, we, we in a way different position than when, when I was growing up, like at that point, it was like the pressure was like on me, like, no, nah, you like, we got to make it like this. Did, like I got my family on my back. So now like seeing my little brother, my dad's much more like, you know, my little brother do what he want to do for the most part. He, yeah. he go to football games. He kicks him with girls. He do this, <laughs> he do that. Like he's, he's living the life as a kid. And so he got a, he has a, a successful big brother who give him whatever he want. 
and then he got a dad where he my dad my dad would go to sleep at eight o'clock at night. So you know once you go to sleep at eight o'clock, it's night still it. young. You know he can go do whatever he want to do. He go sneak out. Not saying that he do do that, but he do do that. So 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 you know he, my my dad is like he he older. You know we 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 successful. We financially good. So. He don't. He don't really depend on my little brother. My little brother played tennis. He's 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 a good athlete, but he don't have that type of pressure like like I had growing up. Speaking about your father, y'all both put in thousands of hours of work at mm -hmm. this thing. Mm -hmm. Has that hug happened? That we made a hug. Is it gonna happen? Is it some goal in the future? But all the time you and your dad have put in, has that big hug happened? Is hey, oh for sure, for sure. Yeah. Wh no. When was that? Man, we, me and my pops, believe it or not, we, we hug all the time. But like, that, that big one, that one that all this shit done paid off. No, nah, I'm telling you, we have that. Like, we have, like, real, like, you know, hugs and, like, real, like, I'm proud of you. And, you know, we we have that. But when we, when we was growing up, my dad never used to, like, really give me that. Like, and not like he was strict, not like he was like that, like he was just so hardcore. But, like, I used to just be, like, wanting that for my dad. Like, he was, no, he was there, like, 100%, but it was, like, I used to be like, Dad, like, did you see that? Dad, do you see that? <laughs> like, like, do you see, do you see what I did to him? Did you see that work I just put in? And now when I get older, like now that like I get them hugs consistently, it's like uh, it's, it's it's everything for me. It's amazing for me, man. And I think <clears throat> we need to celebrate that more, you know, in our community. You know, yeah. when you look at the demographics, you know, or at least what the media, how it's portrayed, you know, uh in the black community. Uh, the dad, the fathers aren't present, this, that, the other. So it, it really warms my heart sitting here to see your face. Cause I've seen you from way afar, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a pleasure to meet you and chop it up in this, in this space. But, you know, you can look at, you know, you're young, you're doing your thing, you're winning. To hear you talk about your old boy, like, damn. You know, the, the humility, the respect you have for your dad, the discipline, those things that he's instilled in you, and you're gonna take those further. I think it's great for people to hear that. Yeah, for sure. You know, and not have any shame about that and, and praise and promote their dad. But I say that to, to come to this. Have y'all been in that ring together? Have y'all sparred nah, or done nah. anything? No, nah, we never we never been you in You put there. your hands on him? No, 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 no. I never, we never got to that point, but no, nah, we, you know, we didn't got to that point where we didn't like, you know, took it there where, you know, he talking crazy, I'm talking crazy, you know, where it's just at that point, but that's yeah. just regular father, As you know, well. father, son, where we just, we just so passionate. My dad be so passionate. So it'd be like, you know, Pop, who are you talking to? <laughs> and then, or some, it might be just some, some, something I say where it'd be like, you know, but it's just, it's just, we just, it's, it's true, true love. And we never get, we, we, we made that like oath with each other. We never, we may say something, but we never put our hands on each other. We never take it to that point. If, if that's the case, all right, Pop, I'll see you later. I ain't, I ain't hear what you're talking about before we get to that, get to that point. Yeah, I think, you know, you mentioned your, your little brother a lot of times. As parents, we just know what we know. Mm -hmm. And when he was raising you, he understood what he understood and he raised you the best yeah. that he could. And yeah. I think you feel that though. Yeah. And you give him the respect and the love that he earned by doing that. And now with your little brother, he might look at it and say, man, Devin always wanted those hugs. And he was like, pops, did yeah, you see yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So now he could give it to him yeah, because yeah. he understands how much that matters for sure for and sure. you you taught him that trust me we learn yeah. from our children yeah. i've learned so much from raising my babies as yeah, it's, it's no it's no real rule book on how, yes. how to be a dad you know it's just experience so yeah we, we went through it with i got an older brother as well we went through with him and then me then my then my little brother and got a little sister as well so yeah he i'm sure he he, he has learned you know the, the the question is and for boxers there's always this greatest of all time or this best. You mentioned Floyd Mayweather mm -hmm. early and how his record kind of screwed up the game because for him it was always about the zero, yeah. no matter what the number in front of the dash was. What is your ultimate goal? Like when you sit back at Channing's talking about that big hug, what is doing enough where you can say, you know what, everything I meant to do in this realm, in this sport, I've done. Uh, I can't really say because it's just so far, so far. You know, we we, you make goals along the way, and you do one milestone, and you set another one. So I'm just taking it one step at a time. I'm just, you know, I've been reading a book. It's called uh, Chop Wood. Or no, Chop Wood, Carry Water. Yeah, I heard of that book. Mm -hmm. To where basically like just like take it one step at a time rather than trying to just go 
you know, look so far ahead that you, you know, you, you get confused of what's in front of you. So uh, right now, like, of course, I want the biggest fights in the world, but I can't get to those fights without beating Loma first. I got to beat Lomachenko. So I got to accomplish these goals ahead of me. And uh, eventually I'll, I'll get there to be an all-time great of, uh, of the sport. Well, in truth, destinies change with accomplishments mm -hmm. and opportunities. Yeah. The more you accomplish and the more goals that you're able to attain, you normally get opportunities to up that ante, 100%. to get an opportunity or a chance to reach a different destination. So Lomachenko for so long was the standard mm -hmm. with the way he fought, defense, quick, pressure, late in fights. What is it going to take for you to go out and beat him? I mean, I got to be on my A game. It's going to take, you know, the the best Devin Haney on that night. It's not going to take, you know, me slightly on or nothing like that. It's going to take me being on point on that night, and that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to have to showcase everything in my arsenal. It's not, you know, just one way I could beat him. I got to be able to bring out all the tools in my toolbox on that night. I got to bring every tool with me to, to the fight, and uh, that's what I'll do. We talked about Linares and, and being in trouble and you saying, you know, sitting down saying, okay, I'm going I'm to grab him, I'm going to hold him until I get back. Senses, yeah. What happens with having adversity against this dude? Because this is a, a different level of accomplishment, a different level of experience, a yeah. different level of skill. And this puts the name Devin Haney to me on a different tier 100%. if you get this win. Yeah, I mean, it's the fight game. You never know what happens. You know, you don't you 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 prepare for it all, but you know, adversity may happen. You know, it's it's hard to swim without getting wet in the in in the ring. You you're, you're going to get hit, and uh, we just got to be prepared for it. And uh, we we hope to go in there and make it the easiest night as possible to go in there and to leave you know the way same way I looked when I walked in. But we prepare for whatever you know he brings to the table. To this point, what's been your biggest pivot in life? What was that one moment that could define where you are now? I can't really say. I, I, I don't think I really have, to have had that moment of where I could say, oh, this is really what defined me where I'm at, but I can't really say. No, nah, it's, it's fair. I'm just like, I'm, I'm like my biggest critic and I'm just like, nah, I need more, like more. Like I need to go harder. I need, I need more. I need to keep proving myself. So maybe just with me being just so just grounded and just like, not like focusing on how much I've done and how much I, you know, my, my accomplishments. Bro, you're not a large man. Yeah. But you got five belts. Yeah. What does, I mean, you got, you have them on your shoulder, yeah. one around your neck, you had the <laughs> joint across here, like a cross body bag. What does it mean right now to, to hold those belts? And on May 20th, 2023, to put those on the line against Vasily Lomachenko. Those belts mean everything to me right now uh, because I'm the man of the division. Somewhere it's what I wanted to be for a long time now. Loma was a fight that I wanted three years ago when I had no belts. He he was when he had one belt. I was his mandatory, and somehow the fight didn't happen. But now with him having to go through me and me being the man and me calling the shots and me, you know, making the calls, it, it, it means everything. But um, it was you know hard to get him, but it's definitely harder to keep him. So I'm happy that I'm in this position to prove myself. And uh, I look to prove myself and prove that I am the man. I earned these belts and uh, I'm here to stay for a long, long time. Bro, you're the undisputed lightweight champion. And here's, I, I gotta agree with Channing on this. You said you wanted this fight when Lomachenko was the man. Mm -hmm. You just said it. I got all the belts. Yeah. I'm the guy. Yeah. Why you gotta give him the fight? It was personal for me, you know. Um, one, I genuinely just do not like the dude. I think he's like somebody who, it's not who who he portrays to be. He's like very arrogant. He's very like behind closed doors. He's not the person that he perceives to be. And I wanted that fight then. And whatever, whatever, he went a different route. They said I was email champion. They said I was this, they said I was that. They said I have a real belt. And now it's like, I want to prove to y'all what how much levels above him I am. This was the guy y'all chose, this guy y'all said was number one. He was pound for pound, he was this, he was that. Yeah, well, I'm, now I'm that guy. So now I'm gonna make him pay for what he put me through. Let me ask, because I don't know, so forgive me for it. Who, who's in charge of keeping your belts? And if you retired yesterday, do you keep all of those yeah. belts? Yeah, so like once you win a belt, you get to keep your belt forever. Like, you know, it's like, like a ring in football or something. So, you know, it's forever your belt, but you know, sanctioning like to actually be the champion is 
if you lose, then the belt's gone. Or you retire, then yeah, it's gone. Well, I mean, that's what matters, to continue to hold the belts. But I'm going to say this is for me. I've, I've watched you fight. I love the fight game. I think you do it the right way. For people to question what type of champion you are, when all you could do is whoever they line up in front of you, knock them down. Yeah. And you've done that at the highest and most elite level. But I am beyond impressed of the man you are. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank you. Your father should be proud. Anybody that has any association with you should be proud, man. Continue to carry yourself like this. There will be other adversities just in life. Yeah. And yeah. you already know that. But you got the right type of man leading you, the right type of family around you, bro. And, like, it was a blessing yeah, to no, sit with you, you, bro. Thank Best you, of luck, man. We can't wait to see you do thank it. Thank y'all for having me. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Bro, he act like an old man, he dog. Got it down pat, boy. Pops, you done got him. <laughs> he act like an old man, <laughs> he dog. Down Real pat. talk, man. Appreciate you. Y'all coming to the fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. We got some tickets for y'all. Hell for sure. yeah. yeah. Oh, we appreciate that. Look at that, man. <laughs> hey. Hold up. Let me listen. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a stem and cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up.